New York's governor, Kathy Hochul, is walking back a rather disturbing analogy that she made just last week to seemingly justify Israel's complete obliteration of the Gaza Strip. Now, here she is just last Thursday speaking at an event for the United Jewish Appeal Federation of New York, first reported by The Forward. I'm from Buffalo, anybody realize that? If Canada someday ever attacked Buffalo, I'm sorry, my friends, there would be no Canada the next day, right? Right? I, I love Canada, but we did have the War of 1812 and they did burn Buffalo, so there might be a little conflict here. But think about that. That is a natural reaction. You have a right to defend yourself and to make sure it never happens again. And that is Israel's right. So we'll unpack that statement in just a moment. But first, some more context. Hochul had been addressing the annual UJA Lawyers Division event at a hotel in New York City. The New York Times reports that the event was geared towards supporting the foundation's critical work in response to mounting needs on the ground in Israel and ongoing needs in New York and around the world, according to its website. Now, the governor's comments, understandably, led to a lot of backlash, okay? For instance, you have the Jewish Voice for Peace, the Buffalo chapter of the organization calling her words disgusting, saying they have no words. We, your Jewish constituents in Buffalo, New York are beyond appalled, Kathy Hochul, cease fire now. Mehdi Hassan also weighed in and had strong words for the governor saying, Insane and yes, by definition, genocidal rhetoric from the governor of New York. Amazing how support for Israeli aggression warps even liberal hearts and minds, which is unsurprising to me. I mean, this has been an ongoing issue even among liberals. I mean, just think about you know the, the Clintons, Hillary Clinton, for, for example, has been um, a staunch advocate of Israel and any type of aggression Israel carries out against Palestinians. The UJA Federation of New York, meanwhile, thanked the governor for always standing with the Jewish community and against anti-Semitism and hate in New York. That is a good thing to stand up for, right? To ensure that people, including um, the Jewish community in New York, feel safe and is protected against anti-Semitism. But that's not what her statements were about. They weren't about fighting back against anti-Semitism in the United States or in New York. It was about justifying the war crimes that are currently being committed by the Israeli government as we speak, by the Israeli defense forces as we speak. Israel absolutely has the right to defend itself, as does any country whose sovereignty or security has been violated. But at the same time, Defending yourself by carrying out war crimes, by slaughtering innocent civilians, including women, children, and innocent men who have done absolutely nothing wrong is unacceptable. Indiscriminate bombing, as our own president, Joe Biden, had a moment of clarity in mentioning Israel doing. That is not a justified way in protecting yourself. If anything, This continues to jeopardize the security of Israel moving forward, considering the aggression and hostility that will be directed toward Israel and has been directed toward Israel since they carried out their siege of Gaza, since you have Iran-backed militias retaliating against Israel as a result of all of that. So it's just brain rot all around to justify what is currently happening in Gaza. Yes, Israel has a right to defend itself. How it defends itself is where the question lies. And currently, this isn't about defense. This is about wiping Palestinians out of that territory, doing ethnic cleansing. And I think Israel's been pretty clear about that. Yeah, I like the Canada analogy because it clarifies the thinking on it, right? So let's say that Canada had bombed Buffalo. I mean, that would be bizarre, and but I would be livid. We'd have stories about moms and daughters and children that died together and all the awful things that happened, right? So that's why I would try to murder at least 10,000 people in Vancouver, 10,000 in Ottawa, 10,000 in Toronto, because just in case, you know, and I hear that the guys who did the bombing were somewhere in there. I mean, maybe a couple of them were in Vancouver. So we just blew up half of Vancouver because according to Hoko's logic, If anyone attacks us from a certain geographic area, we should murder innocent civilians in that area ad nauseum, ad infinitum. I mean, maybe we'll get a couple of the bad guys too. I mean, they're under the ground, they're in the tunnels, probably not. But maybe, maybe 
And then we could just send our giant armies and then we can kill grandmothers and little babies. And when we bomb the buildings in Ottawa and Calgary, the, the, the cement will collapse in and crush babies' heads. But hey, they had it coming. They had it coming because a couple of them or a bunch of them, a whole bunch of them killed in terrible ways people in Buffalo. That's why we killed people who didn't do that. And then imagine we wiped out 80% of the buildings in Canada, just freaking just leveled the entire country. And then we went, ha ha, Canada, innocent civilians, you're all dead. And by the way, from now on, we're occupying you to the end of time. You'll no longer have any rights, you'll have to ask permission for everything. If you do anything that we don't like, we'll cut off all your power, electricity, food, we'll starve you, humiliate you, etc. Yeah, that analogy seems just right. Now, would anyone in their right mind do that to Canada? Even if they bombed Buffalo, even if they went into Buffalo and killed 1,200 people, nobody in their right mind would do that to Canada because Canadian lives matter. They're pretty similar to us, they look like us, they're right next to us, they speak like us. They're good Western lives, they're precious and valuable, and they should be. Palestinian lives, on the other hand, well, you see what's happening. And Governor Hochul sees what's happening and she celebrates it. So look, this is obviously just such a bleak, terrible story. And it's heartbreaking to see elected lawmakers and politicians say things like this. But I'm gonna choose to focus on the silver lining here, which is the fact that she received so much backlash over her statements that she felt no choice but to issue an apology. So that gives me hope that there are a lot of good people in the country who are speaking out against this type of rhetoric and this type of support for the brutal acts that are being committed in the Gaza Strip. Now, in response to the outcry, Hochul semi apologized for her analogy, saying in a statement on Friday night, she said she regretted using an inappropriate analogy that I now realize could be hurtful to members of our community and apologized for her poor choice of words. She added, while I have been clear in my support of Israel's right to self-defense, I have also repeatedly said and continue to believe that Palestinian civilian casualties should be avoided and that more humanitarian aid must go to the people of Gaza. And for just a little more context into this story, back in October, Governor Hochul took a two day trip to Israel where she met with Benjamin Netanyahu. A nonprofit was originally going to foot the bill for that trip. But in the end, it was taxpayers in New York who ended up picking up the tab. Okay, I'm gonna ask one last <laughs> question that'll horrify people. If it's you have a right to defend yourself with maximum unlimited force, like, any attack allows just as much damage, as much murder and mayhem as you want, because you have a right to defend yourself. At what point should the Turks have stopped the Armenian genocide? Because the Armenian rebels did attack the Ottoman Empire. So, and so that would trigger the right to self-defense. At what point in the massacres and the ethnic cleansing and the genocide, would their right to self-defense, the Ottomans, the Turks, their right to self-defense end? Is there no end to a right to self-defense? In which case, was it not a genocide? Were the Turks just defending themselves? Now, I would argue that that is an outrageous thing to say. I think a lot of people would agree with me. So I'm asking the question, at what point does their so-called right to self-defense end and a genocide begin? By the way, the parallels, you keep bringing up the Armenian genocide and Jake, I wanna give you a lot of credit for doing that because the parallels are pretty amazing. So, you know, just like Palestinians basically engaging in these uprisings here and there ever so often, Armenians did the same and there were massacres like the Adana massacres that happened prior to the Armenian genocide being carried out. And so it's not like Armenians out of nowhere decided to attack the Turks. And just like in this case, it's not like this war started on October 7th. This has been something that's been going on for decades and decades. It has to do with occupation, persecution, being treated, Palestinians being treated as second class citizens. So. I don't know, maybe in a Wednesday deep dive, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that situation with the Adana massacres. Cuz I think that it's 
so telling how similar the stories are, especially with what's happening in the West Bank right now. But thank you for bringing that up because it's a really good comparison. Look, I'll ask one more question that people find outrageous, but I literally I don't know the answer to this. So were the Armenians terrorists? Or did they have a right to rebel against an empire that had been occupying them for hundreds of years? So I I don't know that we have answers to these questions. And I'm pretty sure the answers are not consistent or principled. So could the Armenians, did they have to accept that occupation for the rest of time peacefully? Should the Turks still be occupying the Armenians? Because if the Armenians cannot defend themselves. Does the right of self defense go only in one direction and not the other direction? These are very difficult questions, especially when you're on the wrong side of the equation. Thanks for watching. If you become a member, you get to watch all this ad free, except for, of course, this ad. Still, hit the join button below.